I'm Harriet Vance Ball, Associate Professor of Medicine and Cardiologist at McMaster University, and I'm honored and delighted to have with me Professor Olivoto, who is the Principal Investigator of the Landmark Explorer HCM trial that he presented this week at ESC 2020. Welcome, Professor. Thank you very much. Thank you for having me. Um, we would love to hear about your trial. Why don't you start off by telling us about your inclusion criteria and methodology? So uh, we enrolled patients with hypertrophic obstructive cardiomyopathy. Patients had to have a, a gradient of at least 50 millimeters of mercury, either in resting conditions or with exercise. They had to be symptomatic, class two or three, but not class four they were allowed to continue on their background therapy with uh, beta blockers and non dehydropyridinic calcium antagonists, although they had to withdraw from disopyramide if they were on it. So disopyramide was not allowed. And they had to be of age. But apart from that, we sort of included the broad spectrum of obstructive hypertrophic cardiomyopathy in the trial. Why did you exclude disopyramide from the trial? eligibility criteria? This was mostly based on uh, safety considerations because of disopyramide uh, is employed in, in hypertrophic cardiomyopathy because of its negative inotropic properties. And mavacantan is, is a, obviously a negative inotrope. So we, uh, we thought it would not be wise to, to add them up. Although the ongoing Valor HCM trial, which is now enrolling, uh, is actually allowing this pyramid as well, uh, based on the safety profile of Mavacantin in the Explorer trial. So we will have data combining the two drugs in the future. You randomized 251 patients to once daily Mavacantin or placebo for 30 weeks. Um, why don't you tell us what your primary endpoint and findings were? Yes, the primary endpoint took a lot of work to design. It was designed together with HCM experts, um, regulatory agents, as well as patients, um, experts. Some patients were part of one patient, but here were part of the, of the uh, advisory board for the study. Uh, it is a combination of exercise performance, objectively perform, uh, assessed by cardiopulmonary testing and NYHA functional class. So in order to be a responder, you had to achieve at least 1.5 millimeter per kilo per minute improvement in VO2 compared with baseline, as well as at least one NYHA class improvement. Or alternatively, you had to have a greater response to CPAT, so a, a, an increase in oxygen consumption of at least three millimeters uh, milliliters of, of oxygen per kilo per minute uh, at, compared to baseline and no worsening on of, of the NYHA class. Plus, we had a number of secondary endpoints, which mm -hmm. were hierarchically assessed and included uh, ex post-exercise gradient reduction compared to baseline, and YHA class improvement, uh, a reduction in uh, or improvement in in, uh, in uh, two different patient-reported outcomes, uh, which were scores assessing the general well-being of the patients. So really a wonderful combination of objective measures as well as patient important endpoints, uh, perhaps guided by your patient partner. What were the results of your investigation? Well, I'm pleased to say that the, the results were extremely positive. All the endpoints, so the primary endpoint and secondary endpoints were all met with a high degree of statistical significance. Primary endpoint, was achieved in 37% of patients uh, on, on the Mavacantin arm as compared to 19% in, in the placebo arm. So there was almost more than a doubling of the effect. Uh, and um, a one in five patients achieved both, both the components of the primary endpoint. And looking at the secondary endpoints, the results were even more impressive uh, as 65% of patients improved at least one in YHA class and over 55% of patients had complete abolition of radians at rest and on exercise were rendered non-obstructive, so they, you know, which would be comparable to very well executed uh, procedures such as a surgical myectomy. Very interestingly, also uh, subjective well-being uh, improved very remarkably with the score with the patient reported outcomes 
which to patients is probably even more important than, than uh, measurements by echo. And last but not least, we saw a very impressive 80% reduction in circulating levels of, non, uh, of NC pro BNP compared to uh, placebo when compared with baseline, and a 40% decrease in, tro in circulating troponin I, uh, which are two, of course, two important markers of stress, of war stress and damage, which may have long-term implications. And we have, really have to see whether the drug will keep its promise of potentially impacting on the long-term outcome and natural history of disease, which of course this study was not powered to assess. Right, but you are planning long-term follow-up to assess the efficacy of this intervention on clinical endpoints. Why don't you tell us what those clinical endpoints of interest are going to be? Well, all the patients enrolled in the um, in, in three trials right now. So the, the phase two pioneer trial, the, the Maverick trial performed non obstructive patients and the explorer patients are being enrolled and are actually, most of them are enrolled in the long-term extension trial, which is mostly a study assessing um, functional capacity, but mostly safety and the efficacy on the reduction of gradient to, to see whether gradient reduction is sustained and uh, symptomatic improvement is sustained over time. Plus, there are uh, other studies being planned, and as I was mentioning, the Valor HCM trial is actually ongoing and rolling right now. It's a particularly interesting study because this will critically target the, 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 the next big question, which is, will patients with obstructive hypertrophic neuropathy be spared from the need to undergo surgery or interventional uh, operations, such as alcohol ablation, by virtue of Mavicampton, will Mavicampton spare these patients or postpone the need for interventional uh, procedures, invasive procedures? And this is what Beller is set out to do. Uh, so remarkable findings in a well-conducted trial. Um, can you comment on the cost of this drug? And secondly, on your thoughts on the role of beta blockers and calcium channel blockers in this condition? Thank you. These are two very important questions. Unfortunately, I am not able to comment on costs because there is no information available. We do hope this is going to be affordable and sustainable because I work in a national health system environment. So uh, this is critical for uh, guaranteeing access to patients for, for this drug. And we, we definitely are very keen to have for patients to have access to the drug. Um, with regard to, um, to the role of beta blockers and calcium antagonists, well, in this trial, uh, in fact, the subset that benefited less from Mavacampton were indeed patients on beta blockers. This is because the beta blockers blunted the heart rate response to cardiopulmonary testing, and this was expected. So, in fact, uh, while they benefited as much as anybody else in terms of gradient reduction and well-being, improvement in well-being, and all the other markers, including biomarkers, in fact, their CPAP response was definitely less striking. So that the question arises as to whether Mavacantin should better be used in monotherapy as opposed to as an add-on to beta blockers in particular, uh, unless there is a specific need to lower the heart rate or control the trichular ectopies, for example. Uh, so many patients with obstructive HCM may indeed be uh, posed for monotherapy. And the long-term extension trial of Mavacantin now, of, of Explorer, is indeed evaluating that. It will allow patients to withdraw beta blockers from the patient and allow an assessment of mamacantin as a monotherapy. So we soon will have a response to that, hopefully. So longer term follow-up and perhaps some sub-studies are in the works. Congratulations on your presentation, which was outstanding. It was our honor to have you with us today. Thank you for carving out the time to talk about your work. And I hope our paths cross again. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much.